moment. And with that, Chantal, it's yours. Please take okay. it. Um, sounds good. Okay, so coming up next, we have a talk from Siraj Shankar, and I'm very pleased and honored to introduce uh, your living history, which we'd all love to learn about. Thank you, Chantal. Um, thank you, Sri, and everyone uh, for having me here. Uh, when Sri first, Sri and Orit first sent me an email, uh, I think two years ago now, uh, for this, um, I was shocked, and I, I'm still quite shocked. And it, it's, it's it's very much an honor to be here in in this series of very very illustrious speakers. Um, I my um, talk, I only have two slides, so I will. It's and it's very little science, but hopefully more more um, uh, personal history. Um, so my trajectory uh, is sort of sketched a bit, at least in terms of the places that I have lived in uh, on this uh, world map. So I grew up in Bombay, in Mumbai, um, and that's where I spent most of my childhood. Um, and I did, I moved to the south of the country in, in, in India, in Chennai, uh, for my undergraduate uh, studies. After which I um, left India to come to the US for my PhD, uh, spent some time in the uh, very, very cold uh, north uh, of uh, upstate New York uh, in Syracuse, um, crossed the country for a bit uh, during my PhD uh, to the much warmer Santa Barbara, came back to the East Coast uh, in Boston, where I am currently now, um, as a postdoctoral fellow and junior fellow at Harvard. Uh, so that's my brief sort of trajectory across the world. Um, and I'll, I'll go more into each of these uh, individual uh, instances in a bit more now. Okay. So um, growing up, I grew up in Mumbai. And, and so the obligatory uh, pictures from my childhood, from when I was a baby, uh, these are my parents. Um, and so... Um, we, I grew up in a fairly traditional um, South Indian family, um, and education was was definitely um, uh, something that uh, was very primary in terms of um, you know, in terms of what I, I would do. Um, and um, so, my mom used to be um, a banker. She used to work in a bank. Before she got married, she stopped. Um, that job. She left that job when she got married. Uh, but her primary, I think her main passion and motive, uh, interest was actually in teaching, which she eventually continued to uh, started doing and then now continues to do um, in a sort of uh, um, a vo voluntary teaching programs for uh, financially underprivileged uh, kids back in Bombay. Um, and um, she was also sort of well trained in, in music. And so uh, you know, pedagogy and arts were, were a common uh, thing at home. And, and my mom would always encourage me um, throughout my schooling to uh, always try to do everything I can, <laughs> which is uh, perhaps uh, um, a part of my uh, flaw that I carry on for, for even now. Uh, but there was always an emphasis on doing not just academics, but also um, as many extracurricular things in, in the arts, for instance, um, as, as one can do. Um, my dad uh, is an engineer and a uh, mechanical engineer, and he uh, he had a, he runs a company which was started by my granddad. Um, but uh, fairly early on, I knew, and I told him that I wasn't particularly interested in, in running a business. Um, uh, and, and so, so anyway, so that that that's that. Uh, but given that setup, um, the things that I growing up, the things that I sort of primarily was interested in, and and I did a lot of. The first thing was actually drawing. I used to draw all the time. Uh, that's a picture of me. I probably am. I don't know, uh, eight to ten. Uh, that's a picture of my grandmom. Um, and so uh, this black slate and a piece of chalk were my constant companion everywhere. Uh, and I would always sit and sketch and draw. Um, and so art was a constant uh, um, feature throughout my growing years, it continues to be so. Um, I was very interested in literature, in English, and, and uh, storytelling, in poetry. Um, and in the sciences, chemistry was my 
most uh, favored topic and physics and math sort of came at the end. I wasn't very good at math, uh, or at least I didn't think I was very good at math. Um, and, and part of the reason for this interest goes uh, very much to uh, some of my school teachers. Uh, and I want to highlight two of them. Uh, one is uh, Veena Bangre, who was a chemistry teacher, and she was an exceptional in influence on me um, in igniting my um, uh, interest and, and sort of fascination with chemistry, uh, which sort of actually initially stemmed with uh, my fascination for colors and, and how Oftentimes, when you burn all kinds of strange chemicals, they burn in very, very fascinatingly colorful flames. And that was extremely um, uh, uh, something that was very interesting to me. And so chemistry was very fascinating. And Mina Lochini uh, was our English teacher. And she um, was the, she ignited the spark of, of literature in me. And, and so very early on, it, it you know, already there was a lot of imprinting uh, in terms of, of uh, my teachers, and, and this is a thing that will continue um, later on as well in terms of what I decided or chose to do. Um, and so um, soon after, after uh, finishing school and college, I had to decide you know, for going uh, to do my uh, undergraduate degree, what I wanted to do. And I was very interested in science, but I was also interested in, in pursuing art or literature. And of course, a very uh, typical, uh, given that we have, you know, have in India and a very typical idea was that uh, the more practical option would be to do engineering, uh, which was sort of neither of the two things that I knew of, but I also didn't know what engineering constituted. And, and as a sort of safe option, um, I was told that you should do chemical engineering because somehow uh, it would leave you with the opportunities to, to do anything else later on. And also I liked chemistry. So perhaps chemical engineering might be uh, one of the things I should do. Although chemical engineering has little to do with actual chemistry. Um, and so I, I did the usual set of standardized exams. Uh, and in 2010, I, uh, got an, I went to IIT Madras, spent um, four years over there as an, in, if from an undergraduate and, and in chemical engineering. And that was one of the, that was an exceptional uh, moment because that's also when I uh, made some of my very good close friends. Um, I realized that there were, you know, there were a lot of people who, who students, faculty who could make a, you know, who were interested in science for science sake and, and that this could be a career option. This could, you know, I knew that I wanted to learn and 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 this was a this opened my eyes into a possibility of you know you can do science and you can make a career out of it. And although I started in chemical engineering very quickly, um, I realized that that wasn't what uh, I wanted to continue doing. It it didn't capture my fancy as much. But when I sat in a few um, electives in physics, um, particularly by this absolutely remarkable uh, professor again, um, uh, V. Balakrishnan, who had the amazing ability, many of his lectures are still available online on YouTube. So if you get a chance, I do recommend uh, all of his uh, introductory physics courses. Um, he had a remarkable ability to connect very varied and uh, diverse um, topics in physics or in engineering or across the board and connect them and synthesize them in, in a sort of broader conceptual framework. And that to me was extremely fascinating to be able to connect very disparate things. Um, and that that's when I was like, I need to do physics because he was a physicist, he is a physicist, and I want to be able to do that. Um, and so I decided and went uh, after sort of uh, shuttling around a little bit, talking to various professors for my bachelor's thesis, I ended up um, talking to uh, P.B. Sunil Kumar, uh, who was the primary soft matter physicist in, in IIT Madras. Soft matter was the natural um, uh, traversal from, from chemical engineering to physics. And so Sunil pointed me to where I should be going. And he's the one who introduced me to the world of soft matter, of you know, lipid membranes, liquid crystals, polymers, all of the good primary things. Um, and, and I had a great time learning a lot over there. Uh, and he was the one who also pointed to me saying that I should do a, a PhD. And that if I wanted to, if I wanted to continue in this field, uh, I should look at something called active matter 
and go to Syracuse and work with someone uh, over there, Christina Marchetti, who eventually ended up being one of my uh, PhD advisors. And so on, uh, on his suggestion and on a piece of advice that was given to me by, by uh, someone else, uh, which was that if I go to Syracuse and work with Christina, I will get to travel a lot. And I was taken in by that and that turned out to be true as well. I eventually went to Syracuse not knowing the weather, not knowing anything about the place, how um, remote it is, how, how cold it gets coming from a very tropical uh, country and, and, and a city. Um, so I went to Syracuse and uh, the and I had a great time, but the, 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 my, my time in Syracuse was entirely dictated by the people over there. And, um, and this was also my introduction to this field of active matter, of looking at non-equilibrium systems that are, that are internally driven. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, both, so I worked with Christina Marchetti, but also uh, Mark Bowick, um, uh, who worked on statistical mechanics of, of thin sheets, of things like graphene. Um, and uh, uh, so also these are two paintings that I did uh, for both of them. And this was my uh, gift to them when I graduated. And, um, and, and, so, and, and so with this introduction, they sort of uh, showed me and, and, and I, I thought it was very exciting. And this is what got me into the field of active matter. And we started working on, on the kinds of things that I continue to work on today on looking at uh, topological defects, topological excitations, looking at aspects of geometry uh, in, in active systems and, and uh, thinking about uh, non-equilibrium dynamics in these uh, uh, driven internally driven systems. And so uh, I must say, uh, emphasize here that without the help of Christina and Mark, I don't think I would be where I am. They were definitely extremely, extremely um, um, you know, pivotal in, in sort of directing me, sort of taking me under their wing uh, in terms of also um, showing me that I can um, ask, you know, questions in sort of uh, uh, and, and, and um, in an open-ended way, you know, without necessarily having everything planned out uh, and also just take risks and, and, and sort of jump around uh, without um, having sort of one main theme or topic to work on for five years. I could do many different things and that's okay. And so they showed me that that was okay and they um, sort of helped shield me as was sort of mentioned earlier as well in terms of worrying, not having to worry about finances. Uh, and and um, uh, money uh, funding aspects. I must also say another thing: the transition uh, from uh, to uh, the decision to leave India um, and go for my PhD in in the US uh, also had multiple aspects. One was to get financial independence. Um, also, it was also the time when I was figuring out my own sexuality and and um, my own queer identity. And so there were many reasons for me to want to leave. India and go to a new place to establish myself as an independent person and, and also a researcher. Um, and so in all of these contexts, um, Christina and Mark definitely uh, helped create a space where, and they let me flourish there. So, so I owe a lot to them. Um, and after that, I will quickly wrap up because I realize I'm out of time. Um, I moved uh, once I graduated uh, from Syracuse I moved to Harvard and joined Harvard as a junior fellow, and I've had an exceptional time over here. And this is the time when I started thinking about where, ne what's next, you know, uh, trying to see, okay, um, I've been working in the field of active matter, non-equilibrium systems, and this is when I sort of, in a cyclic fashion perhaps, started going back to my roots as an engineer and was trying to ask or think about um, you know, can we ask questions of control? Can we start thinking about biology well, more seriously? I, I didn't know any biology starting. I don't think I still know any biology, um, but this was a, a moment of, of learning and continuous learning. And so uh, I, you know, my postdoctoral mentors, David Nelson and, and Maha, um, been extremely kind and again, letting me sort of dabble and, and flit around. Um, but at the same time, um, 
paving and, and, and showing me the ways in which one can still uh, continue to be uh, a bit itinerant in, in my research interests, but, uh, but to still make it functional. And, and of course, the community and the society has been extremely, extremely a wonderful experience. Um, I think uh, uh, the current cohorts of the Society of Junior Fellows um, are some of the most diverse in, in all aspects, in all axes, and, and that's been an extremely uh, invigorating and exciting uh, experience in terms of just getting uh, inspired for uh, science, for, for life, for, for uh, broader aspects of, of everything, uh, of, of interacting with the community as scientists uh, and as researchers. And so just to conclude, um, I don't know if I if there are any lessons or takeaways out of my trajectory, um, because if if it still feels a bit too early, perhaps for that. But uh, the main thing is be yourself, and and I think it's okay to choose your own path. Um, it seems to work, uh, even if even if you don't. And and sort of uh, reiterating a point that was made earlier, which is we plan, but plans often don't work, and that's also okay. Um, and and I think the main thing is. Um, this people are always there uh, to help. And so I think it's very important. And, and I know for me personally, it's been um, the people around me, my uh, mentors and, and uh, other, my friends, my colleagues have always been an extremely important way, uh, a, a resource in terms of uh, being able to uh, progress through my through this trajectory and so uh, and and perhaps just I want to end with this quote that I like from Albert St. Georgi which is um, research and 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 discovery is in a sense to see what everyone has seen but to think what nobody nobody else has thought and perhaps just to add on to it um, we only think what nobody else has thought is because we bring our own unique perspective to it which is of course informed by our own uh, history and so with that I will stop. Thank you. Thank you so much, Josh. That was really exciting to hear about um, and glad to see and well, excited to see how your living history will progress in the future. Um, and so I think we will we have just swapped a couple of talks. We'll have almost Faust's talk coming up next.